Well, uh, for my project with YVSC, we did electric vehicle readiness in the city of Steamboat Springs, identifying and mapping potential new EV charging locations. Um, now, as Nicole mentioned, I'm Lance Johnson. Um, a little bit about me. I'm a senior here at Steamboat Springs High School. I was born and raised in Route County. Uh, I love the outdoors, be it biking, hiking, skiing, or just being outside in this beautiful place where we live. I love to read and spend time with friends. Um, I'm super passionate about sustainability. I built and maintained my own compost bin starting during uh, the COVID lockdown, and I've kept it going since then. I'm getting uh, some pretty good outputs from it now at this point. Um, I'm interested in the long term and starting my own permaculture farm and hopefully uh, growing all of my own food from what I can uh, make with my bare hands on the land I live on. My staff mentors for my project were Paul Boney, our energy and transportation director, um, and Nicole Pepper, who is both the internship program manager and a geospatial analyst at YVSC. Um, so Paul works a lot in sustainable building and in transportation, um, getting outreach about uh, electric vehicles, um, as you can see from this project, as well as sustainable building practices, um, things like that. And then Nicole, who worked um, very closely with Lily, um, Kayla and I um, on the internship program also worked with me specifically um, to create a map. Her geospatial analysis skills really helped um, in our project for um, creating this map, which I'll talk about in just a second. Uh, we partnered with the city of Steamboat Springs and the Colorado Energy Office on this. Um, the city of Steamboat Springs provided a lot of data for a database that we created. Um, they gave us a lot of lists and just helped uh, really guide us through what we were doing. And then the Colorado Energy Office is providing funding for a grant um, that we worked closely with that I'll be talking about in a second as well. So a little bit of background for the project. Um, first and foremost, electric vehicles don't burn fossil fuels. They don't produce carbon to run. So owning um, an electric vehicle is direct action towards sustainability. And recognizing this, the city of Steamboat Springs created an electric vehicle readiness plan in 2021. Um, if this plan is to be met, the city outlined building 51 new electric vehicle charging stations every single year until 2030 in Steamboat. So that's a really high goal. And we obviously have to work really hard to make sure that that's, that's met because that's it's gonna take a lot. Uh, many people who live in Steamboat Springs live in condos or apartments, and they don't have access to their own personal garage. So for these people to charge an electric vehicle at home, they would need a actual charging pedestal either in their parking garage or um, along the street that they park on. And so to make electric vehicle ownership to those people that live in condos and apartments, we wanted to make a list of multifamily units um, that did not have those personal garages so that we could uh, reach out to those people that needed them and really uh, get the grant out to them. And then finally, to communicate the findings of the database, uh, we sought to create a map of the data. So this grant that's been made available, uh, as I mentioned, is through the Colorado Energy Office. It provides funding for electric vehicle uh, charging pedestals. So the funding ranges from about $6,000 for level two like private chargers. Um, level two charging is slightly faster than what most people would do in their own home, but it's not the fastest available charging. Um, if you did want the ultra fast level three chargers um, that are being made publicly avail available, as much as $35,000 is available uh, through this grant for that. This grant's available to businesses, homeowners associations, landowners, government agencies, um, private people, pretty much anyone who can prove um, to the Colorado Energy Office that they're interested in owning an EV and that the charging station will get use, um, they, they may well successfully apply for this grant. The goal of this project was to identify and contact early adopter candidates for charging stations in the city of Steamboat Springs. Um, so this required, as I mentioned, creating that database of existing charging stations, uh, multifamily units, and then workplaces in Steamboat Springs. And then we used the electric vehicle database to create maps of the above focus areas. And then finally, uh, we created an informational handout to inform the public about the grant. And I actually have some of those here. We can pass those around. Uh, 
Um, so that's one of our uh, deliverables that I provided for this project. Um, the main one was really that electric vehicle database, um, which YVSC can use continuously for a pretty long time. We've got a lot of workplaces, a lot of multifamily units, and of course those existing EV chargers. Um, so there's a lot that can be done with that data in the future to uh, find new people to adopt charging stations. So that was the main uh, focus here. Um, the database includes all the registered workplaces in Steamboat Springs boundaries. Uh, it includes multifamily units um, that do not have a personal garage and that are primarily used by Steamboat residents and that are accessible, that have accessible electrical circuits and places to put a charger. And then I also included just all the overnight and residential properties in Steamboat Springs in this list, um, because while we do wanna target locals and get them to adopt EVs, there's plenty of people who are gonna be visiting out of town who have an electric vehicle. Uh, and the more we can build charging stations to help them as well, of course, that's gonna um, be helpful for the environment. So then using the database, I created maps of the multifamily units and the existing EV chargers. I didn't do a map of the workplaces um, just because A, that exists pretty much on Google Maps already and B, just because it would be a massive amount of da data and it would have been uh, too much to work with. And then, as I mentioned, I also created that brochure. So this is a little screenshot of the multifamily unit database. It is far from the exhaustive list. The whole list is like over a thousand, um, but these are some of the higher priority ones. Um, these are the ones that are mainly used by locals. Um, a lot of these have like lot or parking garage parking. Um, so they qualify really well for this grant. Um, and a lot of them have an HOA that we actually have contact information for. So these are really our primary uh, focus for this particular project at the moment. And then using that database, we created this map. Um, so those little small dots, um, they're a little bit harder to see is that original data that uh, I got from the database. But then we also joined that database um, with a subdivision layer that I got from the Route County website, um, which provided some of these shapes of the business, uh, of the multifamily units, and also what kind of parking they had. So you can see the, um, those polygons that are red are the ones that are lowest priority because they have a garage or a private driveway whereas the green and yellow uh, polygons are the ones that we would really wanna focus on because they have lot parking and a parking garage or and or a parking garage. This is the electric vehicle charger database. It's got um, what type of charger it is, how much it costs um, and where it's located, which we then turned that database into the map you can see here. It's got a little short address there along the bottom. Um, now there are a lot of maps that show existing charging stations online, it's pretty accessible. Um, but this would be a great thing to have on the, say the YBSC website, or just to inform someone, or maybe even have on a brochure just to show like, hey, here are where the charging stations are, and here are some other places where maybe they need to go. Uh, some key takeaways that I want you guys to get from my project is first and foremost, that there is hope for our climate. Our local and state governments are both working and providing a lot of funding to create a more sustainable future. Um, so our state government is creating this funding, making it available. Um, our city government is working to help channel that funding into local areas. They really are trying to push to get this funding used in our community. So I think it's really important that our government um, is working so hard for that. Uh, as well, YVSC is a huge re resource in our community that um, works in a lot of ways behind the scenes. You don't always see um, all of the work that they've done here, but having um, stuck around at YVSC for 12 weeks, it's really crazy just the amount of different projects that are going all at one time and um, all the, you know, be it in energy and transportation, in land and water, in being, you um, just all the different possible areas of climate. YVSC is really doing a ton of work and I think it's really important what they're doing. Um, and then finally, electric vehicles and charging stations are much more accessible than many people would like to believe. They're not as expensive as a lot of people would like to tell you. And with that charging station grant, 
um, you can get charging stations for much less than they would be as well. Um, so they're definitely more accessible than many people want to tell you. I ran into a number of challenges throughout this project. Um, first off, my online communication skills are definitely uh, my weak point. I'm not the best about checking my email, replying to my email, things like that. Um, so that was definitely a learning curve here. Um, accessing data for the database um, and then filtering out the data that was superfluous into just the database that exists now uh, really took a lot of time. The original database of workplaces we got included three different counties um, so I had to filter out the other counties and then all of the businesses um, that were not that were in Route County, but not in Steamboat Springs. So that that was a bit of a challenge. Um, and then uh, the map making that I'm working with with Nicole. Um, it's a class that I just started taking at uh, CMC. It's called Intro to Geographic Information Systems, and it's definitely not something that uh, is my greatest skill yet. So it um, took. It was also a bit of a learning curve, learning how to um, use some of that GIS technology independently without someone telling me, you know, what tools to use and how to do what. So that that also took a second. I'm also not very proficient with Google Sheets, and because I used it for the database, um, I definitely had to learn a lot about that. And finally, time management. Um, I balancing school at the high school, CMC classes, uh, another job. I have as well as YVSC. Um, sometimes it was a little bit hard to juggle all of that, um, but I definitely, all of these challenges really ultimately led to personal takeaways. I think I've helped develop my time management skills better. I've definitely gotten better about re replying to and just reading my emails. <laughs> it was, I, I almost didn't get accepted because I missed an email saying that I had an interview. So, <laughs> um, I've definitely improved my GIS skills. I've become more proficient with Google Sheets. I really get gotten to see what a professional just office looks like and how it works. And um, I think that was a really cool experience just being able to, you know, see, see all the inner workings and, and all of that. And then finally, just um, working with Paul so closely, I've really gotten a better understanding of sustainable building practices um, and codes and uh, what's the most efficient heating source, most efficient source of electricity, what, what have you. I definitely learned a lot about that that I just didn't know beforehand. Paul and I worked together um, on one particular property to survey the multifamily unit parking, although I believe this is something that he's gonna continue to offer even after I leave. Um, so to install electric vehicle chargers, um, certain electrical requirements have to be met. So for the level one charging, which is the slower personal use charging, all you need is a typical 120 volt outlet that's you know, what we have in the wall right here. Whereas um, for the level two charging, which is what most people would be doing, um, especially through this grant, um, you need a 240 volt circuit. So, you know, that's a little bit more specific. Not everyone's gonna have that available, particularly next to their parking lot or garage. And then finally, if someone is looking to invest in the ultra fast charging, it requires a four to 900 volt circuit, which is a lot more than uh, some residential electrical configurations even have. Um, so it was really important that people that are interested in getting the charging stations through the grant actually knew whether or not they could, you know, whether they had the electrical, whether they even had a spot in their lot to put the pedestal, um, even if they had the electrical. And then uh, many level two and three chargers, because they charge faster, they need a Wi-Fi or a service connection so that they can automatically stop charging when the car is full. Otherwise, they'll overfill the battery and you know uh, destroy it over time. Um, so many of these chargers also require Wi-Fi. So Paul and I visited, visited the Alpenglow building, um, which is downtown, to survey their electrical circuits available for EV charging. Uh, both of those pictures are from that uh, tour. And we determined that they definitely, they had the 120 volt, so they had some opportunity for level one. And they also, as you can see, that open, open meter there that doesn't have the meters in it um, is an available 240 volt circuit. So they could also um, put at least one level two charger in there as well. Um, so first off, I would like to acknowledge Katie Kiefer, who's the board president of the Alpenglow building, um, of their HOA. That's the building that 
Paul and I went to, and she was super interested um, in our in what we were doing. I think she is going to apply for this grant. Um, it was really awesome when I uh, created a blog earlier on in the internship and essentially advertised the grant and said, "Hey, well, you know, we want to work with you and really get you to adopt it." And she. Um, almost immediately emailed me, said she was super interested. She's also super interested in getting um, uh, solar panels. So it was really great working with her. I um, also wanna thank Winnie Delacquadri from the city of Steamboat. She provided a lot of the data that we used as well as a little bit of other guidance. Kevin Rogers from Central Electric. Um, we plugged them on the brochure and he also helped inform me a little bit about uh, electric vehicle charging. He informed me that we needed a Wi-Fi. Uh, connection for those. I wasn't aware of that beforehand, but it's definitely something that you need to know for those charging stations. And then finally, I want to thank Paul. I want to thank Nicole and everyone else at YVSC for just making this such an awesome experience. It's been really cool. And yeah, thank you all so much. And then just some thoughts for you to think to yourself. You know, are you interested in purchasing an EV? What barriers are there? Um, if you knew you could access these charging stations, would you be more likely to buy one? And then do you live in a building that could qualify for this grant? Um, if you answered yes to any of these questions, I recommend reaching out to your building president or owner um, or reaching out directly to the Charge Ahead Colorado uh, website and trying to get that charging station and trying to get your own EV because it, it can really make a big difference in our environment. Thank you.